tonight. Such strong work. Let's give it up for all this excellent work we've heard tonight. Seriously. And now it's poetry time. But really quickly, I want to thank Penn, Penn, Amanda, everyone who works there, Natalie, all the interns. Um, because without them, I wouldn't meet Juby. So seriously, thank y'all so much. I appreciate it. And I also want to thank all y'all out in the audience because you could be doing a lot of stuff with your Friday and you caring about literature and diversity. And um, that's just one step, right? There's a lot going on right now. And that's one good step. So thank y'all so very much. Yeah, we can clap for that. I like to clap a lot, too. Let's clap. I smile a lot, clap a lot. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Philip Larkin, that old, grumpy white man with his old, grumpy white man poems, really got it right with the first line of this be the verse. Our parents really do fuck us up. I ain't lying. Y'all know it, too. They may not mean to, but they do, is what Larkin offers as a lessening of the blow after the gut punch of this first line. Years later, the poet Lee, young Lee, would say in an interview that all of his poems are searching for his father. Years earlier, Plath had already written, Daddy, I have had to kill you. For me, like Lee and Pav, almost everything I write is about my father, influenced by my father, and can be better understood when you know about my relationship with my father. Almost any daddy poem can bring me to my knees. Recently, a good friend of mine did a Southwest reading tour, and we called it the Bad Dads Tour. So needless to say, when I was blessed and when I was encountered Jupy's work and learned about his complicated, messy relationship with his father, I was totally in. But Jupy's work just isn't about his father. It's about existing in America in a queer black male body. It's about the empowering, challenging, and problematic inheritance of black masculinity. It's about the throb of love and the difficulty of love in a world that doesn't want you to love, that doesn't want you to even exist. It's about how good food can you turn a bad mood and create a family. It's about ice cream. It's about hot combs. It's about natural kinks. It's about how the right bass line and groove can soothe the sores the world instills upon us. It's about how we make the world matter, how we make it scared and sacred, how we make it pray. Juby, the poet who prays that he will have the grace to greet the patrolman's gaze without Crenshaw in his eyes and catfish on his tongue. That's my mentee, y'all. That's who I'm supposed to teach something. You feel me? I was a little bit afraid, too. <laughs> I was like, uh-uh. Well, let me be all the way real. Juby did teach me. Juby taught me how to write like no one can ever hurt or destroy you. Juby taught me how to stroll through the world with salvation in my eyes and the enemy below my boot. Make sure y'all look at his boots when he come up here. <laughs> Juby taught me that your life is your own and that the things you carry can only bring, them, bring you down if you don't know how to use them. With his gift of the pen emerging voices fellowship, Juby has written so many new, beautiful short stories, personal essays, and poems that will teach the world like he's taught me. Juby's older than me, but he's not some grumpy old white man with grumpy old white man poems. He's a truth teller, 
whose work is going to continue to grow and resonate as he continues his writing career at the University of Miami, y'all. Let's give him some claps. And because my daddy never says stuff like this to me, I want to say it to Juby. Juby is the best thing his father ever made. He's the man his father could never be. Please help me and walk me, Juby, y'all. He's okay. Thank y'all so much for being here tonight. Um, the first poem I'm going to share with you is called Better. I am better than you. Fuck you, I'll say it again. I am better than you. I'm not better than you by accident. I'm not better than you by birth. I had better beaten into me with braided belts and broken broomsticks. I had better bullied into my brain on the ball court. Better is my brand, my belief, and my bond. Better was my best and only childhood buddy. When I was sick, I wasn't babied. If my brow wasn't beaded, if I couldn't taste bile, I better get my butt on that school bus. Better is my born religion. Better is the case for big breakfast and against thick sleep. Better is the only B word I was taught to say. Shoot. My daddy got me so scared of the letter B, I almost didn't write this poem. <laughs> Thank y'all for being here tonight. I strive to live up to the words that introduced me tonight. And, and, and thank you, Doug. Thank you to the Penn Fellowship. And thank you to the Los Angeles literary community. I feel like y'all have so embraced me and fed me. And wherever I go in my life from here, I know where my literary home is, and it's Los Angeles. So I just thank you so much. I'm still working through the introduction, so. The next poem I'm gonna share with you, and I don't have too many, and they're short, I promise, but the next poem I'm gonna share with you comes from a long tradition of list poems, and one of the ways people do list poems is through definitions, as in dictionary definitions. And this one focuses on a word I've had a lot of struggle with, and probably you have had a lot of struggle with. Comply, verb, one, to bend past the moment of fracture. Two, to present one's body for dislocation or displacement. See also diaspora, deportation, dispossession. Three, to tender kisses to concrete with assistance, though unsolicited, which is to say she was asking for it. See also prostrate, grovel, bootlick, beg. Four, to seed the schema of mouth to orifice. See also hole, gap, slot, slit. Five, to yearn for the shrouding of silence. Six, to mortgage one's voice as speculation in breath. See also muzzle, gag, choke, 
asphyxiate. Seven, to sever tongue from spine. This next poem, which is rounding up to the last one, um, focuses on one of the many tragedies we've dealt with in the past few years. And in this body, I can't help but think about guns. I don't want to, but y'all live in the same world I do, so I think you know why I do. Um, this poem is called Pulse. But tonight, Everything we want is dance to mommy and to papi and bra and baby our way into hungering arms. Our hips overflowing with jukebox and bass line where jerk and twerk and pose and grind are street names for genuflection. We sing in shaman's terms, I see the God in you. Rage toward crescendo and lockstep, sweat like worship is labor, find freedom in our faith, this beat, this praise song. Too soon we come to end of anthem, our burden now to still our souls. We linger down your chest. Fingers press flesh where bullets will soon enter. I had a lot of stuff to say, but I think I'm going to just read my final poem after I take another minute. We're poets, we're emotional. I'm so sorry. If y'all didn't want emotional, I'm sorry. Um, because um, I'm a poet, and because I'm me, I like circles. And so I want to end with the poem I began this fellowship with. <sighs> this one is called, This Is Not a Dear John Letter. I have a confession, America. I will never consider suicide. I love rainbows, sure. But what I really miss is carrot cake. And come. I've planned your murder a million times, just a tiny little death, America. I've pitchforked you until you geysered my birthright all over me. Was it good for you too? America. I'm a freak, America, a peeping Tyrone. I fashion a fetish out of outside looking in. I'm a schoolgirl, America, 13 going on gutted, all sass and curves and possibilities. I'm a cowboy, America. 13 going on gelding, all swear words and swagger and shirts versus skins. I'm a symphony of breaking bones. I'm shredding skin on concrete canvas. I'm a teaspoon of history whisked into a pound of lies. I am original kink. I am the shackled serpent. I am Jesus to your Judas. Yes, I'm the patron saint of probable cause. What do you think, America? Does this poem earn me an FBI file? This is not a manifesto, America. This is not a ransom note. This is not a Dear John letter. This is not an invoice. This is a dare. I dare you to love me, America. 
I dare you to love me like it's legal. <laughs>